Hi, my name is Louisa Koch, Director of Education at NOAA. Last summer, in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, dedicated professionals from across the federal government came together to share lessons learned as they offered virtual internships for the very first time. This year, the Federal Internships Community of Practice continues to coordinate in order to enrich internship opportunities for students. On behalf of the members of the Community of Practice, I want to thank NASA for organizing our first event featuring interns from across the federal government. I'm thrilled to welcome you to this exciting event. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Nelson, and it's the National Intern Day. Thank you for all your hard work as a NASA intern. And this summer, we are lucky to have 2,000 interns helping to advance NASA goals and missions in every state in the United States and Puerto Rico. And I can't wait until we have all the NASA interns back at our centers in person. But the virtual internships have enabled NASA and other agencies to make opportunities available to more students that otherwise would not have been there. And it ensures for us to continue to get the best of the best. NASA is working to solve some of the biggest challenges facing our country, climate change, American leadership in space, to name two. And the way we're going to do it is by working together, bringing people together, listening instead of just talking. And we'll do it by making sure that our NASA family is made up of folks with diverse backgrounds and fresh perspectives. And so thank you for all your hard work and your innovative ideas. You're the future of our country. And we hope to equip you with the tools and the knowledge to begin your careers. So many of our leaders at NASA got their start as interns. An example, the STEM education lead, Mike Kincaid, our head of human spaceflight, Kathy Leaders. And I can't wait to see what the future holds for you. And I look forward to your continued success. Thank you for being a NASA intern. Hi, everyone, and happy National Intern Day. I'm NASA Deputy Administrator Pam Melroy, and I want to give you a warm welcome and a thank you to all the interns working across the country to help advance NASA's goals. NASA takes on the hardest technology problems to accomplish the boldest and most inspiring missions, pushing the limits of what we know to be possible. That's why we're so appreciative that you're here and contributing. For NASA to be successful, we need a diverse, an incredibly dedicated workforce to put their heads together to solve the most difficult problems facing our nation. You'll meet many amazing people in the course of your internship who will help you learn and grow. I'm reminded of the inspiration I drew from my heroes and mentors to ultimately pursue a career to become an astronaut. Some of those early internship opportunities in my career were my most formative. And I hope that we can provide an experience that is as impactful for you all here at NASA and across the federal government. While NASA and the federal government is committed to providing opportunities for students to gain valuable experience, your contributions have been invaluable as well to get your insight, to get new ideas, and to foster relationships you'll carry for the rest of your lives. Your generation, the Artemis generation, gives me hope for the future, knowing one day this will be in your hands, and perhaps one of you will be the first person to set foot on Mars. The journey starts here. I know it can be overwhelming sometimes, but I encourage you to persevere and to seize future opportunities, not just to further your own career, but also to create a better world for the generations to come. 
So thank you, and I can't wait to see all that you will accomplish. Hello, everyone. I'm Mike Kincaid. I'm the Associate Administrator for NASA's Office of STEM Engagement. But 34 years ago, I was an intern just like you, just starting at the Johnson Space Center. And in those 34 years since I started as an intern, wow, we have done some amazing things as an agency, whether that's landing rovers on Mars or spending 20 years of continuous human presence on board the International Space Station. It's exciting. Imagine 34 years from now, it's the year 2055, and perhaps you'll be standing on the surface of the Martian planet talking to interns just like you across the country. You know, behind every NASA mission, there's people making it possible, including interns like you. Here's a few words from our, some of our past and present former NASA interns. Hello, my name is Katia Chesaretta. I'm Lisa Stewart. My name is David McBride. I'm Yana Sharon Bunvivat. Hi, I'm Mike Kincaid. Hola, I'm Dr. Jade Salona Cruz. I'm NASA astronaut Jessica Watkins. I'm Brad Neal. Hi, everyone. My name is Paris Garrett, and I am a current 2021 computer vision intern at NASA Langley Research Center located in Hampton, Virginia. I interned at NASA headquarters, Ames Dryden Flight Research Facility. I was a four time NASA intern at a few different NASA centers. I interned at Johnson Space Center and the Goddard Space Flight Research Center. Ames Research Center, NASA Jet Propulsion Lab, for the Dryden Flight Research Center in 1982. I had the privilege of participating in NASA internships, both as an undergraduate student as well as a graduate student. Today, I'm a support scientist at the NASA Earth Science Data System Program. The Senior Technical Advisor for Airworthiness and Flight Safety. I'm the Executive Officer in NASA's Office of STEM Engagement at NASA Headquarters. Today, I am the Center Director for the Armstrong Flight Research Center. I am currently working at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in project management and in cybersecurity. I'm the Associate Administrator for the Office of STEM Engagement. Today, I am still a Pathways intern with Johnson Space Center, where I am working on developing the Ascent Abort model for CST-100. Something I took away from my internship is that people really wanted to help me learn. They wanted to help me understand what was going on at the agency, and they were great at answering questions. Learning the interpersonal skills that it takes to work in an office environment. First off, NASA is a really exciting place to work. There are lots of opportunities and lots of different projects and work to be done. We were working on real things. That was one of the coolest things to me as a student. Learning to be tenacious, uh, like ridiculously tenacious. This euphoric feeling and rush of adrenaline that comes from being able to combine my skills and my passion to do things that I didn't think I was capable of. And, and to see that the big, big things that NASA accomplishes really are a collection of small things from many, many contributors. And that me as an intern and a young engineer could make a big difference working as part of that team. I would say that my NASA internships were really what laid the, the groundwork, laid the foundation for me to continue to explore in STEM and pursue this career. So my advice to uh, any of you that are thinking about applying for a NASA internship is first and foremost, apply. Go for it. Do it, just do it. My biggest advice is just do it. Just do it. Go for it. Nothing is impossible, it is only a challenge. So don't be afraid to apply and believe in yourself. You give it all and, and you pursue it, you will be where you want to be. So. Always believe in yourself. Thanks for all you do. We're so excited to celebrate National Intern Day with you, and we look forward to hearing from you guys as you ask questions and we hear from our International Space Station astronauts. Our astronauts are standing by, and the downlink will start soon. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is Station. We are ready for the event. Houston ACR, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Houston ACR. How do you hear me? Houston ACR, this is Station. We hear you loud and clear. Please stand by for opening remarks. 
Hello, welcome to today's event featuring interns across the United States federal agencies and astronauts aboard the International Space Station in observance of National Intern Day. My name is Laura Paulino and I am a NASA intern. Artemis Generation. As the architects of the future, it takes all of us to explore the extraordinary. We're counting on you to innovate, inspire, and serve for the betterment of humankind. To spark your interest, here's what interns from federal agencies have to ask. Hi, my name is Alyssa Huey and I'm from USGS. My question is, one of the USGS mission areas is natural hazards. Given your unique perspective on the Earth from the space station, have you observed any natural hazards during Expedition 65, such as forest fires, volcanic eruptions, coastal changes, drought, etc.? Thanks for that fantastic question. Yes, we get the opportunity to see a lot of things from space that we, um, everybody else doesn't get the vantage point we have. I have seen, in fact, just this last Friday, I was uh, surprised to see how many fires were over Montana. Um, I've also seen on this flight uh, volcanic eruption in Central America, and I got a picture of Mount Kilimanjaro recently over a very much longer term situation, and it uh, didn't have as much snow as on top of it as I expected to see. Hi, my name is Clara Chang and I'm from NOAA. My question is, since you work closely with people from all over the world, what advice do you have to transcend obstacles and differences in training, language, and culture as you conduct research? That's a great question. You know, Mark's from the U.S., I'm from Japan. We got Tomah Pesquet from France, and we got Oleg and Piotr from uh, Russia. So even on board, we are, we're from four different countries. And on the ground, uh, we have so many people working for the space station program uh, from uh, uh, many, many different countries. And uh, it's uh, kind of rewarding for me to get to know these people and get to know the, all the cultures. And uh, I think it's, it's uh, great to respect each other's ideas and thoughts and uh, work together to, uh, towards a common goal. And uh, that makes things uh, you know, happen. And it's amazing to be uh, in that uh, team. Hi, my name is Kelvin and I'm from the Army Educational Outreach Program. My question is, what have you learned about cooperation and culture while being on the International Space Station where you're living in a microcosm of the diverse world? I th what I've learned is that you've got to uh, be able to talk about issues as they come up. You don't want to let anything just, uh, this works in all relationships. If there's something that's bothering you, um, you need to find a way, whatever way works best for you and the other people you're dealing with, to communicate that in a way that doesn't put them on the defensive and where you're able to communicate that before you are really angry about it, where it's just a minor issue. So don't let things build up. Hi, my name is Matthew Stang and I'm from NASA. As we celebrate all interns tomorrow on National Intern Day, what impact do you see interns having across the federal agency? Thank you. You know, we've been with the agency for a long, long time. I won't say how many, <laughs> how many years. But uh, so we know, you know, how like NASA or JAXA, the Japanese Space Agency works and how to uh, uh, promote and work in this uh, program. But, uh, you know, you interns, all the interns are fairly new. You have uh, new ideas, new thoughts, and different perspective. So uh, we really appreciate those uh, new ideas and uh, new perspective because uh, you can see things differently. And we might be th taking things for granted. And you might say, well, why, is, why are we doing it this way? And that would make us think, huh, maybe we should rethink and uh, that would be, uh, th that would make things improve. So uh, please bring it on. Hi, my name is Hayden Morgan from AFRL. My question is, people often look up to astronauts as role models as they demonstrate the magnificent achievements we can obtain. As an astronaut, who do you look up to as a role model? Quite honestly, the person I look up to the most as a role model is my dad. I, uh, I regret to say I don't think I've been as good a dad as my dad was to me. He is one of the most kind, level-headed people. 
He's very, very other-centered. Um, I just can't say enough positive about the guy. I think the strongest reaction I would get out of him if he felt really angry was he, he would blink his eyes really quickly, and then you know he knew that he was puzzled by that strange behavior. That was about the, as bad as it got. Hi, my name is Anthony Pedraza. I attended Texas Tech University, and I am an intern with the Forest Service. My question is, what type of role does NASA see itself in for the preservation of our planet, and how do the resources in space factor in that thought process? Thank you. Thank you. You know, uh, up on International Space Station and also all the satellites, uh, Earth observation satellites, we're at a very unique uh, um, location, position, altitude uh, at this vantage point to see um, what's going on on Earth. And then also going over, you know, in a certain interval and looking through the changes. So all that data combined, I think we can see the changes in, over the years and researchers and uh, people like you can uh, help us uh, protect the environment and think about how to do that and what we're seeing uh, should uh, provide that information for you. Hi, my name is Austin Tran and I'm from the U.S. Naval Research Laboratory. My question is, how do you determine when you go to sleep in space and do you take shifts with other astronauts? So I'm happy to say, unlike what the Navy has to do sometimes, is we don't have to hot bunk up here. I have my own bed. No one else gets to use it. The, uh, but we did have to define a time period that is de determined to be nighttime for us because we, get, we could pick any time. And what we've chosen is Greenwich Mean Time. So we typically, after uh, our latest evening meeting, we will sometimes turn the lights to a, a dimmer color to help our bodies recognize that it's getting closer to the evening. And then uh, we just go to bed around 9.30 or 10, Greenwich Mean Time. Hi, my name is Mei Fung, and I'm from NOAA. My question is, when I conduct research on the water, weather is the ruling factor as to the success of my day. In space, what weather elements are most dangerous to an astronaut conducting a spacewalk? That's a very good question. Um, so we don't have, you know, storms like on the ground. We don't have, you know, lightning, but we do uh, have uh, radiation. And uh, when the solar wind is strong, uh, we can uh, detect that. And so we plan ahead so that we uh, try to avoid that as much as possible. Uh, now, sometimes you do have to go out the door, uh, but we try to time it just right so the uh, radiation hit is uh, less than uh, what the maximum would be. Hi, my name is Carrie, and I'm from the USGS Office of Youth and Education and Science. And my question is, humans will walk on the surface of Mars within my lifetime. What engineering and geoscience skills do you think will be most important for them to understand? I think that one of the biggest challenges of, be, of being on the surface of Mars is that we're going to stay on the surface of Mars for long periods of time just because of the nature of orbital mechanics and literally getting the planets to align again. So you've got to be really good at maintaining your habitat. That's going to be a primary. This is Houston ACR. We're back with you on the other side of an LOS. Um, repeating the end of Carrie's question, humans will walk on the surface of Mars within my lifetime. What engineering and geoscience skills do you think will be the most important for them to understand? I think that uh, being on the surface of Mars, uh, because of 
orbital mechanics and the vast distances involved, we will be putting people on that service for a long period of time. So the primary skills are going to be understanding how to maintain the environmental control and life support system, how to maintain the habitat. And unlike that up here, where we're, we're maintaining a habitat in space, on the surface of Mars, because you're dealing with soils and things like that, when you do a spacewalk there, you're going to have to make sure you can keep things clean on the way back. So I think those are going to be very important skills to have on Mars. Hello, my name is Rasha, and I'm from NASA. And my question is, out of all the experiments being done on this mission, which results are you most curious and most looking forward to? Wow, uh, we, uh, during our daily work, I guess we do maybe participate in maybe two to five uh, science experiments a day. And uh, so we, we have a lot. But uh, one thing that I got interested in was uh, the, uh, having water bear up here. And uh, apparently, you know, they stay here for a couple of generations before they go back. So uh, the researchers can uh, take a look at them when they go back. So that's something that I'm uh, looking forward to seeing the results on. Hi, I'm Dave Gonzalez, and I'm currently working on methods to provide better thermal support to divers in cold waters at NSWC, Panama City. I've read that astronaut suits require both heating and cooling garments. And my question is, how does a astronaut maintain thermal regulation during a spacewalk in dynamic temperatures? Thank you. So our spacesuits just do such a fantastic job of insulating us from the outside environment that the, what we really have to do is reject the heat from, that our bodies generate because um, the, the body heat will not translate through that spacesuit. So we've got uh, a liquid cooling and ventilation garment that allows fluid water to travel through the hosing around our body and then it will pass by an ice pack. Now, me personally, on a spacewalk, I have too many other things to worry about, so I basically sweat in the sunshine and I'm a little chilly in the cold, but I do have the ability to adjust that if I wanted to. It just takes effort, and I'd rather focus on the other things that are occupying my attention. Hi, my name is Kai Stargle, and I'm from the Air Force Research Laboratory. And my question is, as an astronaut on the space station, part of your job is often as a research scientist. Do you get paired with science projects that align with your background, or are you expected to adapt and learn to maintain new science projects? Well, that's a great question. Uh, Mark's from the Army, and uh, my background is uh, engineering. So uh, science is something uh, alien to me. Um, but, uh, you know, we have great training on the ground, uh, so uh, the instructors and also the uh, researchers will tell us about the experiment and tell us the technique and uh, teach us well. So up here, we will do whatever um, is on our schedule, and we'll try to help out as many uh, uh, researchers as, uh, as possible. Hi, my name is Teresa Keith, and I'm from NOAA. My question is, the global community and U.S. agencies are uniting under the United Nations Ocean Decade by working on the science we need for the ocean we want. How does your work in space help us learn more about our blue planet? One of the significant things I think about being up in space is the emotional aspect of, of getting a better understanding of how thin our atmosphere is and how precious this this uh, amazing place we live on is. The, uh, but we have lots of sensors. We've got hyperspectral imagery, multispectral imagery, we've got LIDAR, and all of those, thing all of those things provide us different uh, ways to observe the Earth and gain a better understanding of it. Hi, my name is Araceli Morales Santos, and I am a resource assistant intern at the U.S. Forest Service. And my question is, I am fascinated by space and space exploration, so much so that I can spend hours watching PBS NOVA episodes about black holes, dark matter, and gravity. What is a particular show, a movie, or a memorable experience that propelled you to a career with NASA? 
So for me, when I was a kid, I really liked science fiction movies like Star Trek, Star Wars, and uh, and then uh, my dad took me down to Kennedy Space Center. We saw rockets, and uh, you know, went down to a Smithsonian uh, Museum. Um, so looking at the real stuff and the science fiction combined, it made me uh, interested to go, actually go to space, and that's how uh, it started for me. Hello, I'm Priya Abiram from the Army Educational Outreach Program. My question is, what is the new set of right stuff or character traits that an aspiring astronaut must have in order to reach Mars and beyond? Thank you. Well, one of the key things about leaving the rest of humanity behind is that you, get, you have to get along with the humans that you're traveling with. So I would say the key thing, the right stuff, is really interpersonal skills. You've got to always do your best, but put more effort into making the team of people around you performing their best than you always being better than everybody else. So it's all about the team. Hi, I'm Ronald Morero, and I'm from NASA. As you observe the Earth on the space station, what weather patterns and landforms are most fascinating to you? Well, Earth is fascinating. You know, we have a, a big window called the cupola looking down at Earth, and we have a, a you know, better quality window uh, as well looking straight down. Uh, and a lot of us, we just spend time in there uh, whenever we have a chance. Um, but uh, for me, uh, the most fascinating thing is actually clouds because it is, uh, you know, it has different forms, different shapes, you know, and uh, during the, like the sunset sunrise time, it, uh, you can see the shadow, uh, just a very, very long shadow. And it's just fascinating to me. And uh, I take a lot of pictures of it, but I can't remember where I, where I took it from. Hi, my name is Amrita Sahu, and I'm from the U.S. Naval Research Laboratory. My question is, as an astronaut, you probably encounter unforeseen challenges on a regular basis. What advice do you have for aspiring scientists on how to approach a problem that is seemingly unsolvable? So uh, take my advice for, with a grain of salt. I am not an expert, but my, here's my advice for what it's worth. Go ahead and work really, really hard on that problem, and then step away from it and do something fun, um, associate with other people that have a wide variety of viewpoints and different approaches to things, and then you'll really get the creativity going and you might be surprised when a good idea on how to solve that problem you've been working so hard on comes to you. Hi, my name is Claire Fox and I'm from the DOD's NSWC Crane Division. My question is, what has been your favorite memory since becoming an astronaut? That is a tough question because every single day you have, uh, you know, a lot of laughs even here and even on the ground. So um, that's a very tough question. I think maybe it's uh, tomorrow. <laughs> ah, well done. My name is Katie and I'm an intern for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association. While working for the Center for Satellite Application and Research, I've been learning about several different satellites in our atmosphere and in space. My question is, how are you able to avoid satellites and prevent collisions with space junk on the space station? I would answer this question in three parts. One, you got to be able to keep track of where things are, and we do have that ability. And then, but it's limited in size. And then you've got to have the ability to, to move to a new orbit if that new orbit is a better place to be. And then the third thing is you've got to recognize that you can't see everything, so you've got to have a space station that can protect itself. So we've got multi-layers of alloy that help protect us and re, uh, reduce, the impact of, uh, reduce the impact of an impact on the space station by spreading out that energy. And so far, so good. We haven't had anything, uh, anything hit us that has caused us to start to depressurize. We want to extend a huge thank you to our speakers and astronauts for being part of today's program. To all the interns watching, thank you for your meaningful contributions you make every day to the federal agencies that you serve. Happy National Intern Day. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event. 
thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.